So we are uh, going to have a look at your game against uh, Portish. You yeah. are playing with the white pieces in Stockholm Interzonal. Uh, what's so special about this game? See, he was on the run for a qualification slot to the candidates tournament. I think the first uh, four or six uh, qualified for the candidates. And I was nowhere in that. I finished last in that tournament actually. But uh, this particular game, towards the end, it was not in the middle or in the end, but towards, towards the end, the halfway through. Uh, for him, he had to beat me because I was the tailender and coming from India. Uh, so, he should, ex he should expect me as a potential uh, victim for him. And uh, I knew that he would be under attention, that everybody is there in attention because they have to beat me. Because uh, I am not supposed to qualify. I have nowhere near qualification. So, I thought I will not allow him to win. That's how I started. So, you, you were always a D4 player? Uh, no. I, after that, I... Uh, yes, I, at that time I was a D4 player, but later on I changed. I changed to 1971. Uh, this was when I was this. Yeah, 1971 I changed to E4. Okay. Because of uh, Sweden, Grandmaster Sweden, you coached. He said D4 is not your opening. You have to play E4. You were more tactically inclined. Yeah. 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 He said I used to play the move G4 often. Mm -hmm. He says G4 is unpositional. Don't play that. And he says, then he, uh, when he ch asked me to change to E4, I knew why he, he asked me to change to E4 instead of G4, instead of D4, because I often play the move G4, which does not at all come in the setup of a D4 opening, whereas it comes easily in the E4 opening. So I, when I switched to E4, I started scoring better, oh. very, very good. The very first um, championship was in uh, 1972, Bikane. I won it with uh, th nearly three rounds to spare. Oh. By, playing because, E4, yeah. by playing E4. And the games are brilliant, like all Morphy hanging pieces hanging here, left and right. It's like finding your lost love yeah. or, or yeah. <laughs> first time love. Yeah. So you played the Fianchetto system in the Kings India. Yeah. I think you must have been already pretty happy with your position, yes. two bishops. Yeah. No, at that time I didn't bother about two bishops. See, I'm still I don't I'm not a lover of the two bishops. I think what is good for you at the position you do it. There are players like Parmesan who will swear by the two bishops, <laughs> and there's a person like Mani Kansam who will swear by the two knights. The two knights are better. Yeah, as you said, there is nothing like two bishops and yeah. I, that's why you made this move yeah. bishop g4. I mean, otherwise people would want to keep yeah. their bishop. Yeah. I think like, in this position I was thinking, if black has to win, he has, I will close the queen side. If he wants to win, he has to play f5. So I said, I will not allow him to play f5. So if he would have taken on g4, you are taken with the pawn. Pawn, yes, of course with the pawn. <laughs> and then uh, yeah. f5 is not so easy, yeah. you get the yeah. e4 square. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he played knight b6, b3, and he's trying for f5, but you stopped it yeah, once again. Yeah. And once again, f5 would have not been good because yeah. h5 was Yes, hanging. so he has to push h4. Then again, <laughs> f5 is not possible. <laughs> so the entire game is revolving yeah, around, around f5. Yeah. So the queen side is firmly blocked. And this rook a2, I, I thought more natural could have been to develop your bishop, but... Uh, Where? Where to develop the bishop? e3 maybe. It's doing a good job at c1. <laughs> <laughs> and now you get your knight to perhaps e3. e3 yeah. yeah. Perhaps d8, 6 was not a very good move. Yeah, It, uh, it helps you to get all your pieces yeah. Uh, coordinated. Yeah. So you got one, two, three, four pieces, four white pieces bearing on f5, yeah, and he's got only two. So, yeah, so f5 is not going to come uh, in this yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> Forcing him to make a decision. Yeah. Uh, so now the rook also opens up on f5. Yeah. And this move was uh, very nice. Like you allowed the doubling of the pawns on g4. Yeah. Yeah. 
And you think uh, white is better here? Yeah, but I think white is better. Because his knight is no doing nothing on g6, on b6. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps he should be trying for knight c8 to e7 here to play f5, but I think after you get knight e3. Yeah, knight e3 is not knight e3, knight h4, anything will come. Rook comes to h2 and yeah. was this necessary or you just wanted to finish off in style? Maybe uh, I don't know how, how uh, I, I couldn't see which other way he could win. Like rook h1, Where? then he goes knight g5. Yeah. Yeah. This was a very strong, um, like yeah. typical Rai Lopez, like uh, yeah. sacrifice. See, I control that square f5, and finally I sacrifice the knight on f5. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I am sure you might not remember, but do you have any idea till what point you calculated or you were already sure you were winning this game? No, I knew I was winning this game when I gave the knight. Ah. So, I, you had seen I, this all, yeah? Yeah. I don't gamble giving away the pieces unless I am Desperately, I'm, if I am about to lose, then I may gamble. Yeah. But here I am already always in control. I like this uh, part of you repeating the moves to show him that you are in complete control of it. Like you, you repeated the yeah. moves twice and yeah. once again. Yeah. So it was a very nice victory. Yeah. For me. Yes. But it was a hard break for him, poor man. After the game, did you speak anything with Portis? I asked him to look at the game. He just, without a word, he got up and went away. He was very, very upset. Some players are not upset. For example, when Dr. Aver lost to me, he sat on, he himself started analyzing the game. He was a very friendly person, not like Portis. Portish, uh, he wants to win at any cost. Ava was not like that. Yes. He had mellowed, <laughs> getting older. You know. So, I, actually, my one of my heroes is Ava, Dr. Ava, great man. And Lim Kokan, General Secretary of the Singapore Chess Federation. He is no longer alive. All, of, all my favorites are dead. Lim Kokan was a man who, you know, <laughs> he, he organized an IM tournament in Singapore inviting some of the top players from Asia. It was IM master tournament, you know, IM norms, are possible to get a norm there. And he specified, this is what he'll give you, lodging, where he'll give you, every day he'll give you so much for food. Then he'll come and take us in for dinner somewhere and he'll pay for it. He'll give us also money for us to buy our own food, but he'll also give us dinner free and he'll talk to us all the time. He said, at that time, he said, you, we are from Asia, we are not rich, he will say. And we cannot afford to put you up in five-star hotels, three-star hotels. We can put you up in some decent place where you, you where you are comfortable, and we give you money so that you can buy whatever you want. And this way, we save money. So it's possible for us to run such tournaments. We want you to also do the same thing when you go back to your own countries. No. See, he was a, that great this people. Kind of motivated yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, Lim Kokan. He's dead. He was general secretary of FIDE for some time when Kapamaras was president. By the way, in this same tournament, you did play Bobby Fisher and I your did. game was uh, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you had yeah. a very good position. No, it was, yeah, it could have been better, but uh, but he was superior. No, he, he fell into a tactics which lost me a piece. Yes, sir. Yeah. Queen B1 yeah. type one. I completely didn't see it. But it made me a friend of his for so quite some time. Yes. <laughs> if you would have beaten him, maybe you would not have uh, been so friendly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So thanks a lot for yeah, showing yeah. this game yeah. and uh, very nice victory. Yeah.